how would you like a robot for a chauffeur? This is the first look at a new self-driving car from a team at Oxford University. It's unique because it's affordable. Working off two lasers and a computer, this system could eventually cost drivers just £100. It is a little disconcerting, as you can probably imagine, being driven by a computer. We're coming up to a tight bend now. Alex hands off the steering wheel. The one question always on your mind is how will it react if somebody walks out into the road? OK, safe. The system isn't automatic from the start. It needs to learn your routes as you drive around. Then, as soon as it recognises a familiar journey, like the school run, it asks if you want it to take over. This sensor here, just poking out from underneath the number plate, is emitting a laser curtain. It's not going to happen overnight. There's not going to be a sudden juncture where there's a car that you can buy that suddenly is autonomous all the time simply by getting in the car and pressing a button that says, drive me. This isn't going to happen. It's going to be a sliding scale. Year on year, bit by bit, the cars will do more of the driving for you. 30 years ago, driverless technology looked a little bit different. But never did I believe that I'd end up with a car with no driver at all. Today, you can buy a new car that brakes automatically for you. And Google's self-driving cars have clocked up 300,000 miles in America. The only crash was when a human took over. But will you ever persuade people to let a computer sit in the driver's seat? As a cyclist, the thought of cars on the road without, without an intelligent life form driving them absolutely horrifies me. And sitting in the back being driven by, no, terrifies me. <laughs> if humans also make errors, and I think if it was proven that there was no issue, uh, that a driverless car was any worse than actually a human driving a car, I'd give it serious consideration. With many big car makers working on new systems, it seems self-driving cars are just around the corner. Richard Westcott, BBC News, Oxford.